there's lots of people who are in tech. They know about blockchain, but they don't understand it. The pandemic has hurt a lot of women in regards to the job market. Terrible. Industries are on their knees. And blockchain tech is a growth area. So why can't some of those women who have the skill sets pivot into this arena? Just because you don't understand the language or you don't understand the technology, that should not be the reason why you shouldn't look at this space. Welcome back to season five of Kryptonites, special edition London and Canary Wharf. We have some of the original gangsters of the crypto space and on top of that, a new format where you can earn crypto in every single show, plus earn swag and more. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and let's have some fun. <laughs> some of the biggest banks are money laundering for the Sinaloa cartel. And so much of what we're doing is trying to provide more transparency to the financial world. We're gonna see a surge in interest in smart contract platforms. It's gonna be an interesting market. NFTs coming from everyone. Everyone's dropping NFTs. Is there anyone now today still not sure about Bitcoin? You're fucking mad. <laughs>In a fast-moving and confusing crypto asset market, get an edge with Crypto Slate Edge. Enhanced, in-depth news coverage and extensive crypto asset and sector data are all part of your exclusive access as a member, helping you understand the market with features such as on-chain metrics and sentiments, all of which allow you to convert knowledge into action with an ad-free experience. As a bonus, access our private Telegram channel to receive live insights whilst engaging with the CryptoSlate community. Subscribe now at cryptoslate.com forward slash edge. Lavinia, I'm so happy to have you on our show. I've been wanting to have this conversation with you for so long. I'd love to know how you got into this space. What took your breath away? Well, first of all, thank you so much for your kind words. Um, I believe that we all have a purpose in this life and it's about planting seeds of intentions in others to see what is possible. And I'm just very grateful that I was able with my community, Women in Blockchain Talks, to plant that seed of possibility with you. Um, so to answer your question, um, I, my background, or should I say my, one of my passions, I have many passions, right? Um, but one of my passions is financial well-being and money mindfulness. Um, I never thought of myself as a diversity advocate, but when I look back on my career, I've always been about women empowerment. So when I was teaching women uh, financial well-being and money mindfulness, there was a focus on uplifting, empowering women with their finances. And so when you have clients and you're talking to them about their relationship with money, you're going to look at the past, the present and the future. What is the future of money? Because if you understand what the future of money is, then you can make better decisions with what you have, right? Correct. And so the future of money is digital. Future of money is decentralized crypto. So I kept hearing about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. And at the time, this is around about, you know, 2016, 2017. It wasn't as easy as it is today mm -hmm. to purchase crypto. So unless you knew someone who was really in that space, who could show you step by step, you'd hear about it, but you wouldn't know how to invest. Um, and that was very frustrating for me. So because it was frustrating to me, I just kind of blocked it from my mind, like, well, I can't do that anyway, because I don't know how to do it. And then I started hearing about blockchain. And I was like, what's blockchain? And I was confused, like many people are, like the difference between blockchain and Bitcoin. And then I started to learn about blockchain and I understood that blockchain is the technology that underpins cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Without it, transactions cannot be recorded, right, on the digital ledger, on the distributed ledger. And then I started learning about the different uh, use cases and business applications and the possibility of it. I'm all about possibility, innovation, Absolutely. because if you don't have the ideas, then how can you create? How can you change the world? How can you make an impact, you know? And so many times we get stuck on what is, rather than focusing or playing in the world of what can be.
And the reason why we get stuck in what is, is because we're too scared to take the steps to investigate, to explore, and even to a degree, have fun with the possibilities of a new field, a new technology, a new idea. And so when I started learning about blockchain and I saw all the different, as I touched upon, I, uh, possibilities around uh, blockchain application and touching on the uh, UN's SDGs, I was like, hmm, this is interesting. And I, kept, I looked at the value chain, the supply chain, how the trackability, uh, the transparency, which is so important to me, and traceability of not just Bitcoin, but of blockchain, what that, that you know, that's what blockchain does. Um, it made me think about all the different ways people can use it to create wealth and also financial inclusion. And that is very important to me. And the other key thing, it was about permission. With blockchain, you don't have to ask permission. Correct. That for me was so powerful as a, as a premise, as an idea. I don't have to ask permission to come into this space. There is no barrier to entry. The only barrier to entry is me. And I love that because as women, how many times do we have to ask permission? So that was when I was like, yeah, I'm all down for blockchain. Absolutely, <laughs> that's, um, that's incredible. And you touched upon a really interesting subject, financial well-being. Can you tell me a little bit about what financial well-being is, what it means in today's society, and also about your coaching, your financial well-being coach. Can you tell us what you do and what financial well-being is? Of course. So financial well-being, for so long, we heard about mental well-being and we heard about physical well-being. But what about financial well-being? Finances is something that we have to interact with, money. Most people don't understand what money is or how it works. They know, of course, that I need it to pay the bills. I need it to buy nice things. I need it to go on holiday, to have great experiences. But even if you come from a wealthy background, there's many individuals who have bad relationships with their money. Why? It might be because men make decisions around money. So you as a female, you feel like your decision making around money is always going to be incorrect. So you feel anxious about it. And because you feel anxious about it, you feel fearful about making decisions around money. Maybe you can earn it. We're all taught how to earn money. But are we taught how to invest money, how to manage money? We're taught how to save money, but not invest money. And investment is where your money grows. How to take risks. Are we taught any of those things? No, we're not. There's many individuals who inherit money and they feel guilty, like, what did I do to deserve this money? So they waste it or they don't spend it and they live a very frugal life and it's like they're punishing themselves. Money is a tool. That's what money is. And it's also an energy. Because why is it that some people are able to attract more money or earn more money, not because of their financial background or their money, or their family, sorry, but they themselves and others just continue to struggle. And we see this all the time in the form of lottery winners, uh, you know, winning a lot of money and within a few years, it's gone. That's so true, actually. That's very true. What is it, you know? And there's lots of books and studies around that. But ultimately, we are not taught about financial education. We don't have strong financial literacy. And this you see more so in women. That's a very interesting point. And um, my next question is about Women in Blockchain Talks. You're the founder and the host of a women-led platform, an educational platform for networking. You do workshops. Can you tell us about what you do and the mission of Women in Blockchain Talks? Sure. So um, doing what I did in the financial well-being space and just talking about uh, the future of money and then learning about blockchain, I wanted to learn more. And similar to yourself, one of the best ways to learn is on the job. So I worked for a blockchain startup and it was amazing. I loved it. It was fast paced. It was just great. And I learned a lot. 
it wasn't focused on crypto. It was focused on personal identity, personal data, sovereignty. Digital learned, identities. Digital identities. And I learned so much about our sovereignty and how, and it's quite interesting because when you think about your sovereignty, you wouldn't think about it related to tech. But in a way, blockchain is giving you back your sovereignty because it's allowing you to um, manage, take control, take ownership of your data, right? Or even making you more mindful about doing that, okay? So mm -hmm. with that being said, I left the position I was in and I wanted to do something in blockchain, but I was like, I'm not technical. What can I do? What, what can I bring to the table? What value can I add? And I got in my own way because I didn't know what I didn't know. It's as simple as that. How many of us don't know what we don't know? And so we get in our own way and tell ourselves excuses about what we can be and what we can do. Fortunately for me, there was someone who saw my light Hmm. and saw my skill sets. Mm -hmm. And then she said to me, Lavinia, and I'll always be grateful to this person. Yes. And she's actually been on your show. Please Name tell it, us who. Rianne Lewis. Ah, oh, yes. Rianne big Lewis. shout out to Rianne Lewis. Yeah, big shout out to Rianne. So I'll always be grateful for her because she, just as I was a seed for you, she was a seed for me, you know? She's an incredible woman. Yeah, she really is. So she said to me, Lavinia, we need people like you because you're entrepreneurial. You know, you can be the front end Whereas what I do is the back end. She says many people have failed with their startups because they know the back end, but they don't know the front end. And one of the key things that is going to push blockchain forward is business acumen. Yes, the technolog technology is fundamental. It is there. It's tech at the end of the day. But how do you move that tech forward if there's no business applications to move it forward? If it, the businesses is what makes it applicable, to society, to people. And then you need the technicians, the engineers, the coders to create the vision. You need visionaries in this space and entrepreneurs are visionaries ultimately. True, very true. So with that being said, she gave me the confidence to, you know, start Women in Blockchain Talks. And I started Women in Blockchain Talks to basically give a voice to women. At the time, there was a lot of events going on, so pre-COVID, and a lot of the event organizers was like, well, we don't know where the women are. That's the reason why we have man panels. <laughs> man, what was it, manuals. Manuals. <laughs> and, um, and it was like, well, if you're looking for women, I'm gonna give you the women. There's many women out here. And also, as a woman myself, I sometimes felt intimidated just being in a room full of men, not simply because I was intimidated by their gender. I'm not intended, intimidated by anyone's gender. It was more a case of you're not giving, I don't feel like my voice is being heard and I don't feel that you're giving me the space to be heard, you know? Um, and so many women coming into something new, they want to, and even men, they don't want to be part of the boys club and the bros and the, you know, how much money are you making and the <laughs> ego, ego, ego. It's tiring. You know, we, we don't want that and we don't need that in society today. You know, we need love and light. That's what we need, right? And so there's lots of men in my community and they've come in it because they feel safe. It's nurturing. And one of the reasons I started Women in Blockchain Talks is because I knew there would be women there who potentially could be clients for my financial well-being awesome. um, consultancy. Great opportunities. Um, exactly. But you know what? I really just fell in love with blockchain and I saw that there was a need to just not just promote women, the women already in the space, but the educational element so other women could come in to see what they could do in this space. And that is what really excites me. So the objective and the aim of Women in Blockchain Talks, it's female-led, female-focused. However, we are open to all genders because as they say in the Caribbean, and I know you're a Caribbean girl, one hand can't clap. You need two that's hands. That's right, that's right. Yeah, right. I love that expression, <laughs> actually. So, um, and, and I just, you know, I want to hear the male voices, but the numbers speak for themselves and we need to hear the female voices more so. So that's the reason why it's female-led, female-focused, and the objective is to close the, um, the gender gap, to promote women into the space, show them what the possibilities are in regards to career or business or just creating wealth and just building something that is positive and that's progressive for all people because diversity matters and more importantly representation matters.
That's very true. Yeah, thank you so much for your for saying all of those words out there. <laughs> uh, I think we need to hear more of this. We need to hear more from from you. <laughs> Uh, there's one thing I will say, you know, a lot of people talk about diversity and uh, gender equity, but you, people need to put their money where their mouth is. You know, at the end of the day, people will say things like, oh, um, well, with a startup, there's not enough traction or there's not enough followers or there's not. It's it's a startup. Someone's yeah, got to give start. Give me time. <laughs> yeah. Give me time. But. Someone has to start from somewhere, true, right? True. And sometimes the people who are already established or who don't think or care about, it's not that they don't care, but it's not a priority to them. They're not going to do this. But so the people who are doing it, get behind them, support them, help them, uplift them, empower them so that they can also continue to uplift, empower. And I'm not just talking about myself. There's many female groups out there do major, wonderful things. Do we get the funding? Do we get the sponsorship? No, we don't. Not yet. We will. We Not will. yet. We will. But right now, you know, I'm talking to the listeners. If you're out there and you have a business and you've got spare funding, you know. Hear out. Look, hear out. Yeah. You know, there's, there's businesses out there and there's diversity and inclusion, you know, organizations and communities like mine that need your support. So let's start to put our money where our mouth is rather than saying, yes, we need more women coming in. But what exactly are you doing to help create that? Hey, my friends, prize question of the week. In your opinion, how can we make the blockchain space more diverse and inclusive? Leave your comments and you might be the lucky winner. I'd like to ask you about the mindset around crypto, about around blockchain. There are so many different projects, so many different tokens out there. It's a very new industry. How would you like the mindset to evolve around crypto education and adoption? First of all, I'd like the mindset to be open. <laughs> and as I keep saying, if you, you don't know what you don't know, right? So there's a lot of people out there who just simply do not know. But if you are hearing about blockchain or you're hearing about crypto, or even if you have been burnt by crypto, don't give up on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just means more education. Become part of a community where you can learn. You don't have to do this by yourself. A lot of people ask me, well, where do I start? True. Well, you start by going to an event. You know, this is the reason why we do what we do, or I do what I do with Women in Blockchain Talks. Come to events, join the free community, ask questions. Get involved. Get involved. You know, you don't have to do anything. You can just watch and observe and, you know, assimilate the information, let it percolate. And I read an article not too long ago, and it was just talking about this, this woman. Well, it was an individual. It had nothing to do with their gender, but it was just talking about this woman who had vested and had lost, and then she made back. And it was like, is she, um, does she know what she's doing? And the, quest and the answer to that is no. She, she didn't know what she was doing. But now she does. But why does she know what she's doing? Because she took action. So I've lost in crypto. Many people that you will talk to have lost money in crypto. It's just the way that it is. But you don't give up on the learning. It's like saying, well, I, I, I tried to walk and I fell down, hurt myself, and I'm not going to try again. Crypto, what I love about it, it is low barrier to entry if you're looking to create wealth. If you are looking to, um, to build your pension, if you're looking to have financial independence and all the things that I talked about within my financial well-being and money mindfulness coaching and consultancy. Yes. But you don't have to go all in. You can start with 20, 50 pounds. You could do it, you know, slowly at your pace. Um, I think too many people want instant gratification and it just doesn't work that way. And then they want to say, well, crypto is bad or crypto isn't something that you should go in or it's high risk. It is high risk and it's very volatile. But because it's high risk, that means that you can earn quite a lot as well. There's many people who have become millionaires off of this and they were broke, poor before this opportunity came. Outside of crypto, there's also the business element. And then NFTs, my gosh, non-fungible tokens. Are you a fan of NFTs? Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm in love. <laughs> I'm in love. I, I'm really in love with NFTs. Um, so much so that I'm putting together a workshop where you can come in and you can learn exactly not only what an NFT is, how it works, but you can mint your own NFT. And this is the sort of workshops that Women in Blockchain Talks likes to do. We don't just like talking. 
we like doing. That's we so want to cool. show you how to do it because in doing it, that's a skill set. And once you get better at it, who knows, you could start, you know, um, minting and creating wealth with your, with your NFTs. Wow, fabulous. Are there any other projects that you're in love with? Uh, any crypto projects, maybe DeFi projects that you like? You know, I find the whole DeFi spice a little bit overwhelming. I'm just telling it how it is. With NFTs, I can see how NFTs can be used to um, introduce people into the DeFi because it kind of gives them more of an example of how to use DeFi. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you have an NFT that has value to it, you can collateralize it within DeFi to, um, to basically get a, a loan from one of the platforms such as Avi, mm -hmm. and you could do that. And then once you have that, then you can invest in other areas. So this NFTs are an asset, it's a digital asset that you can loan against to create to have, to have liquidity to invest in other projects. And to me, that's amazing. I know people who have won NFTs, so they've paid nothing for it. And this NFT is now worth 10K. They collateralize it, they get a loan against it, and they've got funds in their hand, wow. which they can then use to invest in other things and create wealth. Where can you do that really and truly in the real world space, you know? Um, I'm sure there are, maybe there are places, but usually it's property. You have to find a deposit to, to put for a deposit, unless, I mean, to put down for a property, unless of course you're inheriting it. And of course that comes with its own pros and cons and with inheritance tax and all the rest of it. So the point being is that the ability to create wealth from nothing is very possible in this space. And I know people, again, who have, come from nothing and become millionaires within a few months due to NFTs. And I think that's quite amazing. Yes. And, and when you think about blockchain and crypto and NFTs, it is about sharing the wealth, right? And we're seeing examples. I am seeing examples of this happening. And that really inspires me. Absolutely. It's very inspiring. It gives you so much freedom and confidence as well. Yeah. And you can educate others about it. Once you know how to use something, you know, you feel like you want to share it to the world exactly. how it works. Exactly. So tell me about Women in Blockchain Talks. Uh, you have a job board mm -hmm. that's live. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. And you have a campaign going on. Tell us, tell the world yes. what's, what's this about. Well, you know, as I said, too many times I hear people talking about diversity, inclusivity, gender equity, and it's like within the blockchain space. And it's like, we, we, let's do something then. And so I created a campaign. It's called 50,000 Women into Blockchain by 2023. Now, of course, there's already women, myself, you, uh, many of the women I've interviewed on my platform um, in this space. So it's about 50,000 more women. So I want to talk to women in businesses, women in science. And you might think, oh, well, if they're in science or STEM, they're gonna know about blockchain. Not necessarily. Blockchain is a niche within technology. Very niche. So at the end of the day, there's lots of people I know who are in tech and they know about blockchain, but they don't understand it, right? Um, the pandemic has, the global pandemic due to COVID has hurt a lot of women in regards to the job market. Um, they've lost jobs, industries are on their knees. Many traditional industries are on their knees. And blockchain tech or tech, Blockchain is a growth area. So why can't some of those women who have the skill sets pivot into this arena? Just because you don't understand the language or you don't understand the technology, that should not be the reason why you shouldn't look at this space. As I've said before, and as I will always continue to say, we don't know what we don't know. So take the time to explore. Blockchain may not be for you, but then you just like me, just like you, and many of the other women who have come to the space, you might be like, oh my gosh, I love this technology. I love the potential of it. And there's so much I could add to this space, you know? Um, and that's what I want to do. I want to show people what the possibilities are. I'm not here saying blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. I mean, I'm all about blockchain. You don't have to be all about blockchain. But don't say no to something you don't understand until you come into the space and have a look. So the objective with the 50K campaign ultimately is to invite 
um, to uh, inspire uh, women from all different backgrounds, from all different diversities, from all different parts of the world to come in and have Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had to put that in there. <laughs> I just had to. <laughs> um, and come into the space and see what they can create, you know? And the, there's so many different ways that people can get behind it, and there's different aspects of it. So the job board is one, because what's the point of telling people to come into this space? Potentially, there's jobs for you here. Well, where do they find it? Where do they go? People don't want to be scattered here, there, and everywhere. So let's have a place. So companies who are out there you know if you've got jobs put it on the job board right yes. let let's let's centralize well it's funny I, i'm using the word centralized centralize. even though we're in a decentralized, decentralized space world, yeah. but let's find a place where people can find you know this information and then in addition to that we have a hackathon because mm. i think hackathons are very this is in collaboration with the world um, blockchain hackathon and I think it's important hackathons because they're a great way for people to play around test it you know um, in a very kind of like short space of time and see if it's something that they love we also are going to be launching a global leadership because there's so many women out there who lack leadership skills but it's not that they lack the leadership skills they just lack the confidence to um, to embrace their leadership skills, because I've always been told, you know, you're too loud um, or you're, you're, you're not, you're, whatever the case may be, there's yeah. just... Be I, loud. Yeah, be, be loud. Be Let, proud. Yeah. Be out there. Why stop <laughs> Take yourself? up space, as Take they say. Space. Take up space. Um, and then we also want to um, launch a global chat, global chapters for women in blockchain tools, because there's only one of me and what we're doing can be done with many women across the world. I Just like I talk about Rianne planted a seed in me and I planted a seed in you, there's how many women are out there that I can plant a seed in that can then go out to plant seeds in other women. So um, that's an element. But the key thing about the 50,000 women into blockchain by 2023 is the quiz. It's sort of like a quiz. Because I wanted to make it fun. I didn't want to make it too heavy for when people having their first touch point um, of blockchain. So this quiz is very simple and in doing it there's little educational nuggets um, and then of course they're, they're invited to join the community and then there's different pathways that will show them how they could continue on their journey. So for example you have a uh, um, career pivoting Charlie or Skeptic Sam or newbie Naomi. So <laughs> newbie's <these> profiles. <laughs> yeah. I like these personas. <laughs> so you get to learn a lot about yourself as well. Exactly. And so it's just basically a door opening, but in a very friendly, intuitive and nurturing way. And that's, I think that's important. Yes, the tech is important, but if we want to invite more people into the space, and it's not just about women, you know, if, if the campaign brings in men and other minority groups, that's fantastic. But the focus is on bringing 50,000 women into the space by 2023. 50,000 more women. Can you imagine what a milestone this would be for yeah. you, for Women in Bolshevik Talks? Yeah. And I highly encourage everyone to follow Lavinia on social media, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and to follow Women in Blockchain Talks as well to Thank learn you. more about the articles, the podcasts, yes. the workshops, the memberships, yeah. everything. This, yeah. is, uh, this is a really exciting time to get involved. It really is. Thank you so much. And you know, the, let's just, I just want to make something clear. I might have created this campaign. I may lead on it, but I want it to take on a force of its energy of itself. And that means collaborations. I'm all about collaborations. Because as, I, as we just said before, one hand cannot clap. So, um, and you know, for me, collaboration is a great opportunity to build more and impact more. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Lavinia. Thank you. So there you had it. Lavinia Osborne, the founder and host of Women in Blockchain Talks. We just had a fabulous interview. I've been wanting to do this interview for so long. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on our show. And I hope you like this interview. Thank you so much.